Hello everyone, Eileen back with you again with another Lavinia Stamps video tutorial from me to you. Today I'm featuring the gorgeous Aerial Fairy Large on a gesso resist background. Let's go. I'm starting off with an A4 sheet of multifarious cardstock in white and I've folded it, creased it and I've cut it to give me a one layer card that is 14 centimetres by 20 centimetres and then I've taken some sweet poppy stencil stencil tape which is very low tack and I'm making a frame around the outside of the card to give me a nice border and uh, I can pop my stamps and the fairy in the middle. Okay, just making sure that the inside edge of this tape is really stuck down well. It won't damage your card when you take it off. This is good quality tape. And I haven't had any damage when I've used it. I'm down there and just make sure I'm not bothered about the outside edges but that inside edge just do not want the ink leaking underneath okay should be okay right I have one of the Lavinia stamps flower masks and I think this is called large flower mask just taking it onto the outside edge coming up from the bottom like so I have a makeup sponge, a clean acrylic block, spatula that isn't so clean, and some white heavy gesso. I'm just popping a tiny amount onto my block and then spreading it out. I need it to be very thin on the block. No lumps or bumps and very thin. Two reasons for that. One, it will dry fast through the stencil. The thinner it is, the better. And also, um, those of you that know gesso know that it's white acrylic paint usually, although you can use a, a non-pigment type medium as well, acrylic, and glue. And of course, it does give you a resist, so it can be hard to stamp over. So I want to make sure that it's very thinly applied so that it is easier to stamp over. But it still gives me a good effect underneath. Don't bother too much if you can't stay in the lines of your mask or stencil. Doesn't matter. It's just going to give you interest in your background there. So that's one image. Now I'm going to pop it over here, coming in from the right hand side. Again, very thinly applied, just dabbing it through the mask. Let's have a look at that. Yeah. That's good. And then finally, because obviously we need three, down from the top section. And sorry if I'm rocking the desk. Let's have a look at that. Oh, that's good. So I've got it in three areas. But it isn't overpowering because it's quite a large mask. And now I'm waiting for it to dry. In the meantime, while I'm waiting for it to dry, clean off my block with a damp cloth and dry that. Because of the glue in gesso, it goes hard pretty quickly. And also my spatula. And the mask itself I've popped into water. I should clean that up at a later date. 
might be uh, sooner than you think if I make a mess of this card and have to do it again. <laughs> I hope not, anyway. Right. So that's cleared up all the tools I've used. So hopefully, it seems pretty dry. I can start now applying the inks. And I'm using Element Stella Blue in the background, along with some of this mist from the New Lavinia Mysticals Golden Temple. This is a mica-based um, spray it is absolutely gorgeous really and it sprays so well uh, i've used a fair bit of this so far and it's not clogged up on me once it's a really good valve inside these sprays So I'm starting off with the Element Stella Blue and a makeup brush. Quite an inky pad. So just going to give a, using a circular motion, take off the first couple of bits of ink. But if you get splodges, to be honest, it doesn't matter. It's a background and uh, it will soothe itself out. And there are other things going on anyway. It's got I'm paying more attention here over on the right hand side with the blue because I'm putting some gold down on the left. Right, so that's given me quite a nice background. And now on my spray, but I'm not going to spray because I want total control and I'm worried that I'll be too heavy handed with the spray. So I have my spray box, giving it a good shake to make sure all that mica is dispersed throughout the the uh, liquid inside, the water, and the rest of the ink in there. And I'm just going to spray a couple of sprays there. And I'm using kitchen towel to pick up the gold. And I'm just going to pop it down over here. Randomly, to be honest. I can see all the mica, it's giving me a lovely shine, but the gold isn't overwhelming. The colour is lighter because I've not got so much ink on, of course. I just want to pop, I'm just getting my box back to pick up some more from that original. And you can then more or less place that gold wherever you want it to be. I want it to go down this side more. Still damp. So I can still see the color coming through. But it's getting paler as it goes and that's good for me anyway you might want it to be a bit darker all right you won't get the true beauty of this look until i take the tape off but uh, i'm happy with that right next i have a very damp piece of cloth tiny piece of cloth and now I'm just removing some of the ink from that gessoed masked area just to bring it back to white. So the gesso will come through and I'm just dabbing it around so that I haven't got any streaks. 
being a water-based ink, you'll get uh, less trouble if you just dab. You get a bit of just a bit of texture, and it looks as if you're meant to do that, which obviously I am. Uh, and now I'm starting to slide it across the other gessoed areas here, and that takes off some of the gold. And again, round the edges, I'm just dabbing it again to give me a, a bit of texture and pattern rather than streaks. And then back to the streaks again to get more of that gesso shining through. So it gives you a lovely pattern in the background. It will, of course, make your ink look lighter, whether it be the gold or the blue, but that's good because you've got beautiful stamping to go over the top with the fairy and a couple of other bits. Okay, now I do need to dry that off because it's quite wet, my card, even though I was careful that the um, cloth wasn't too damp. Let's dry that off. The mica is still showing. All right, it's more supple than it was, but it is still there. I can still see it shining, but it is much lighter than it was, but that's what I was after. Should be good. Okay. Right, so now I'm on to the stamping and I can take off the tape. Oh, a little bit of bleed there. Not much though. And don't worry because I'm going round the edge of that with a pen, so that won't show. But not too bad at all. Nice and clean down that side. Clean down that side. And fabulous along the top so yeah we're there so I'm just going to do a close-up for you this card will flatten out again promise I'm gonna do a close-up so that you can see that so and I'm hoping you can still see the mica because it is there still even though I've um, taken some of it away it is still there it's hard to see with this light, but uh, trust me, <laughs> you will see it. Okay, so back again. And on to the stamping. I'm using Versafine Clear Nocturne and my stamp pad, stamp press, because Aerial is a large stamp, so I don't really want to take any risks. Down to my, my Misty. Fully butted up against that edge here. Oh, come on. So, you now the card is a bit buckled still, but it will settle down. Lovely day today here in North Kent. Sun is shining. Really gorgeous. Okay. It appears everybody's tried to do their washing today catch the breeze and the sunshine. I love to see white fluffy towels hanging on the line, don't you? There are other unmentionables that I'm not quite so keen on, but anyway, back to the card. <laughs> and here we have the beautiful, gorgeous Ariel. Isn't she an absolute delight? Down into the middle, I think, like so. 
Yes, that looks good. Gently down. Oh, that was a clean stamp, by the way. And Versafine Clear Nocturne, gentle tapping. Now, I always say gentle tapping, and the reason for that is that it is definitely gentle tapping because a lot of the Lavinia stamps are very, very detailed, especially in areas like the wings. And if you're heavy handed with your ink pad, you can get ink in and pooling in areas that you really don't want it to. And you will lose all that detail when you do the final stamp. So it is, as it says, very gentle tapping. But with a decently inked ink pad, I re-ink my ink pads on a regular basis. I can't tell you how often because obviously it depends on how often I use them. But as soon as I start seeing the image is not being as crisp as it should be, I re-ink the night before I'm going to use it again. And if I can't find a Versafine Clear Nocturne re-inker, then I use Versafine Onyx Black in my pad. Okay, let's see how this goes. Down. Not too much pressure, just smooth over. Don't want to force the stamp. That's lovely. Now there's a few marks on it and that is because and I shall clean my stamp off shortly. But for now, she can go over there. There are a few areas where the ink isn't quite as opaque and that is because of the resist of the gesso underneath. So all I'm going to do is to take My black polychromous, you could use a paintbrush and some of the ink from the pad to do this if you wanted. And I'm just going to fill in the areas where it's not quite taken or it's a bit patchy. But you will find that when you use any sort of resist underneath your stamping. But basically, that isn't bad at all. Takes a little while to dry. I just want to see how much is wet here. So you could use a heat gun if you wanted to. That's not too bad. It, it, it'd be another few minutes, but I can get on with what I want to do. Just going to fill in here again. Yes, that's good. Um, next, I'm going to do a bit of a background. Before I do, I'm using this repositionable tape just to close the card up to make it flat because it's still settling down after using that damp cloth to remove the, uh, remove the ink from my gesso resist. You know, I made the background a bit damp. And still settling down from that and of course from the inks. I'll pop that on there. Take my stamping mat. You can see okay. And I'm going to stamp now the lovely fox. This is from the set called This is Fox Set. I think this is from Fox Set, from the Fox Set um, stencil. No, that's not right. 
I believe this is from the Fog set. I could, to be honest, I can't quite remember. But they are small foxes. You've got some larger foxes of the same image. And then you've got some sets, set one and set two of the smaller foxes. And I can't quite remember. And I haven't got it to hand. So uh, I will put it in the description um, when I post this video. I'm just popping him on my block. These are new stamping boards. I've not tried these before from Lavinia Stamps, but I'm getting on really well with them. I'm used to the, the thicker um, acrylic blocks, but these stamping boards seem to do the business and that's all you really worry about, isn't it? So just again, Onyx, uh, not Onyx Black, <laughs> Versafine Claire Nocturne. He's a handsome chap. I'm just going to remove some of the surplus ink from around the outside. Like so. And then I'm just going to pop him down at the bottom. And I want some of his... Um, fur coming out of the side so just make sure that he's straight down let the ink soak in press and up gorgeous next I'm going to put some words on. Words of spring in the background. Again, I'm using the same board as I did before. Just check that's up the right way. Yeah. And the ink that I'm, I've chosen this time is Versifying Clear Warm Breeze. So it's a blue tone. And I need second generation for this. So that's why I've moved the card over. Take that off. And I'm just going to pop this along that top. Press, keeping it inside of the inked area. It's gorgeous. Inking up again. Lovely words and absolutely beautiful font. Second generation again. And then down, still staying over on the left-hand side. And then one more, I think we're there. And again... Second generation. Make sure the stamp is up the right way. And down. And still keeping it within the frame of the inked area of the card. Gorgeous. Now I'm going to put on, this is the last stamp, and it is called Star Cluster. But I'm going to go now for a contrasting colour. And this one is Versifying Claire Red Tulip. Lots of those around at the moment. Beautiful spring flowers. Now these stars, there is um, 
quite a lot of stars here as I'm looking at it over on my right hand side and then they sort of thin out as you go over to the left and there's a bit of a gap and that is the area that thinner area that I want behind her head so that most of the stars are in front of her so I'm just placing them around about there so that she's encircled by stars, as she should be. Why not? <laughs> and up, gorgeous. Yeah, I'm liking these. <laughs> right. What's next? Oh, last but not least, we have a couple more bits to do. I need a gold pen and a black pigment ink pen. And, and I think that will do actually. So starting off with a gold pen, I'm just going to, I'll take this away for a start. I'm just going to highlight some of these shapes and images from the original large flower mask. Just to highlight them and mix in with that mica from that gold spray and give them it gives me more of a shine you can put as much of this gold pen on as you like or as little and it just brings it to the foreground gives you a bit more sparkle Now, on the original card, I did put some of the gold here on this side, over on the right in the blue area. And to be honest, I didn't like it. So your choice, I'm, I'm not going to put any pen work on here. Your choice if you do that, because obviously it's your card. But um, I, I didn't like it when I'd finished it. So I thought, right, I won't do that on the... Um, sample card that I'm demoing so there you go I'm not doing that but I am going to put in some gold dots so that the magic from the wand is sort of sprinkled over the fox <laughs> okay and maybe a couple of these stars could have a gold center why not yeah. And finally, taking, making sure my hands are clean and I can hear you all going, oh no. I'm just going to draw a line, not straight, look. Down and along to frame and finish. can use a ruler if you want to, if you don't want a squiggly line. I want a squiggly line. So then I'm bringing it around again. To emphasize it is a squiggly line. And if you make any mistakes when you first do the first line, this covers it up with the second. There we go. Right. I don't think that I've forgotten anything. Just going to tape out, take out, sorry, this tape from inside the card. 
It's still not quite flat, but it will be. So that is the card that I've just completed. Here's the card that I made earlier on. I don't think, I think they're the same. Yeah, they look the same, don't they? Maybe the orange, the gold there is a little bit darker. But pays your money, takes your choice. All I know is I found that very relaxing to do. And I had fun. And I hope that you do too. And can I also say thank you so much for the lovely kind comments you leave me both on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, everywhere else that I go, YouTube. <laughs> you are so very, very kind. Thank you very much. It is so appreciated. Right, have fun. I'll be back soon with another Lavinia Stamps video tutorial from me to you. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.